first, you know, we live in a, this is putting it mildly, a pretty divided country. That goes without saying. If we can't agree on anything at all, we, I mean, heck, we don't agree if, if uh, elections are stable in America, for crying out loud. If, if we can't agree on that, let's agree on this, okay? Albert Einstein was a smart guy. Albert Einstein was, <laughs> knew a thing or two about a thing or two, right? What was the commercials with uh, that, that says we know a thing or two because we see a thing or two? That was Albert Einstein. He knew a thing or two. And Albert Einstein, who had many great quotes, once said, adversity introduces a man to himself. It's a great quote. It's a powerful quote. That resonates like, oh, that's, that's a good one. Often, and what that means, at least in my estimation, is, you know, you, you, can, you can feel like you're a certain type of way. You can say you're, th this is who you are. You really don't know until you hit adversity. When the fit hits a shan, crap goes wrong. Who are you and what are you about? So this is what Dak Prescott had to deal with yesterday against my Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, I, I had to write it down just to make sure I got it. Game is delayed an hour and a half because of a, a lightning storm in Pittsburgh. And by the way, a mon I should say a monsoon. It was raining pretty hard in Pittsburgh. Shout out to some of the Steelers fans for trying to drink the, the their alcoholic beverage under the, the poncho. They were trying to you know make it make all things better, but it, it was it was not ideal. Try and keep warm, try and make sure you're in good good shape. Hour and a half rain delay, weather delay, rather. You are playing, Dak is playing at a severe coaching disadvantage. Mike Tomlin, Mike McCarthy. Eh, I think I'm going to go Tomlin there. Uh, maybe I'm crazy. I think I'm going to go Mike Tomlin. Okay, how about the fact that Dallas committed 11 penalties? Hasn't that been a problem for the Cowboys in the Mike McCarthy era? A lot of games they have double-digit penalties, and last night was no different, in particular on the offensive line. Tons of pre-snap penalties on Dallas' young offensive line. Also, in that, in that game, O-line got worked by T.J. Watt. Cam Hayward played well. Nick Herbig makes some plays. Uh, Dallas O-line didn't play that well last night, I didn't think. How about this? Mike McCarthy with these boneheaded non-challenges on a Jalen Brooks catch the first half that should have been a first down. And then a challenge and a play that was obvious. I'm pretty sure it was the, um, I think it was the, the catch on the sideline for the Steelers. I think it was that. But bad challenges and non-challenges by Mike McCarthy. Also, without Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, and Deron Bland for the Cowboys defense. And also... No Brandon Cooks. And what did Dak do? Oh, let's see. He threw for 350 yards and led a game-winning drive, throwing the game-winning touchdown on fourth down. Adversity introduces a man to himself. Uh, listen, not, not, to, not to spoil my Brock Purdy segment, but uh, more things than not went Brock Purdy's way yesterday. And he still couldn't come through. Just about everything, other than what was a shockingly good running game by the Cowboys. I was actually quite impressed. Rico Dowdle, don't know if you're going to get that again, but had pretty good performance up until that fumble, which, by the way, Dak saved the Cowboys' bacon by diving on the football. Otherwise, my Steelers would have won the game. Is that I've said this for three years on Carving It Up Live, going back to the 2021 season, and it's as true as ever. And last night, to me, is the ultimate advertisement for this statement. It is a quarterback's league. Yes, you need the coach. The coach is huge. If you got a great quarterback with subpar or bad coaching, or you know, or at times average coaching, <clears throat> Sean McDermott with the Bills, there might be a ceiling on how far you can go. Heck, the Dallas Cowboys, I feel like, are in that spot. McCarthy's not a bad coach, but no one's ever going to put him in the same tier as, again, the guy on the other sideline, Mike Tomlin. It's a quarterback's league. Last night, the Pittsburgh Steel defense was awesome, y'all. Not one, not two, but three takeaways off of Dak. Two turnover or two uh, interceptions and a strip sack with Watt and Herbig combining to make the play. By the way, Dallas, a block kick in the red zone. That didn't go their way. Ev almost everything went against the Dallas Cowboys. And a lot of things presumably went for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're playing a, a, at least statistically going into this game, a bad rushing defense. Okay. They've got a, a Cowboys defense that is just decimated by injuries. I mean, there are guys that Cowboys defense lie. I've never heard of before. I mean, even, even the guy Marshawn Nealon, who was like the starter uh, in place of in place of uh, Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence, even he went down early in the game. Everything broke for the Pittsburgh Steelers at home, Sunday Night Football, and you couldn't come through because your quarterback's Justin Fields, and there's only so far. And I like Justin; he's been fine for us this year. I bragged on him last week, but he is still Justin Fields, and we have a big enough sample size to say he's fine. He's nothing special. Other guy in Dallas is special. And I've been saying this, I mean, really since it came to the league, but certainly the last couple of years, 
when the Dallas Cowboys have, for reasons I cannot comprehend, have not addressed some of their glaring needs as it relates in particular to their wide receiving core. I mean, I'd listen, Dak throws the game-winning touchdown pass to Jalen Tolbert, who just injured his man parts of the play before. I mean, that's, that's what Dak's working with. Okay, Rico Dowdles having the game of his life, and then he fumbles on the one. Could have been the most disastrous inning the play to the, the game ever for Dallas, and Dak saved him there. Did he have his turnovers? No question about it. No one's going to excuse any of those, particularly the second interception, or rather the first interception in the red zone when he was targeting CD Lamb. You know, CD and Dak kind of had a, a brief conversation on the sideline. Wasn't great. Pittsburgh's got a better roster. Pittsburgh's got a better coach. Pittsburgh was at home. Pittsburgh is the better running team against a beat up Cowboys team. And Dak Prescott still did its job because that's what great quarterbacks do. That's what great quarterbacks do. Adversity introduces a man to himself. When it comes to great quarterbacks this league, I don't judge you when things are going well. I, I don't judge you when, you know, you got a perfect pass rating, but your roster is basically stacked. Or if wide receivers are running wide open, or your defense is creating a million takeaways. What are you when stuff doesn't go the way you're hoping that it goes? And when the Dallas Cowboys absolutely need Dak Prescott the most. This is why, I mean, when that game was over and I just kind of sat in my misery as a Steelers fan, of course, in the carving it up bowl, and we had the graphic for it, the carving it up bowl, of course, Dak Prescott comes in and just stabs me in the chest and breaks my heart as a Steelers fan. Of course he does. But after I kind of sat and thought about that game, after that game is over, I'm thinking, and folks didn't think the Cowboys should have paid him. Are you out of your freaking minds. Did you, uh, did you see the other organization that drafts well, that is well run, that is well coached? But they don't have that guy. Pittsburgh's going to be drafted quarter. Listen, Justin Fields, not the long-term answer. Listen, he's done a good job. He's better than Kenny Pickett. Kudos to him. It's not a high bar to reach, but he's better than Kenny Pickett, who he had last year and won 10 games with him starting the majority. Uh, Russell Wilson, what is, uh, you know, what's his new catchphrase? Uh, win the seventh. Yeah, go Hawks. Let's ride now. Win the seventh. Hey, get Russ out of here. These aren't the answers. Dallas Cowboys are a disastrous organization without that man at quarterback. So even CeeDee Lamb, who's amazing. I, I can't speak highly enough of CeeDee Lamb. A guy pulled up disappearing act in the second half. Uh, what do you have? Like one catch, two catch? I mean, he was, dis he, was, he, was, he was nowhere to be found. Against a better team, better coach in about as bad of circumstances as Dak could have possibly imagined. Beat up offensive line, penalized offensive line, bad challenges by McCarthy, block kicks. Dak still got the job done because that's what he does. And, and to me, the ultimate test, I, I, I think I heard Nick Wright's the first, shout out Nick Wright, is the first guy I ever heard say this. And he said, I'm like, God, that's so true. Is that the mark is of if you're playing a great, great quarterback. Like, no doubt, no question about it, great quarterback. Is if, no matter the situation, two minutes ago, they got the ball in their hands with a chance to win. How do you feel about it? And despite Pittsburgh getting three turnovers off of Dak Prescott, despite the fact that Dak's receiving core aside from CeeDee Lamb, I mean, he's working with, Ferguson was pretty good last night. Ferguson made a big third down catch in that last drive. And Jalen Tolbert doing what he can. And Brooks made a catch. You know, Hunter Lipke, the fullback, is getting snaps on this team. How do I feel with Dak Prescott the ball in his hands? And to tell you the God's honest truth, I'm, sit I'm not sitting there. I'm actually standing. I'm nervous as, nervous as I'll get out. I'm standing there, bite my nails. God, just get just one play, just 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 one player, because I know he's gonna kill us if we don't make it. And by the way, and I tweeted it as soon as it happened. The play was there. On the Landon Roberts gets his best Troy Palomalu impression, punches the ball out from Rico Dowdle, and Dak saves the day at the end. This is a, I've said it for years, and I, I think last night is the prime example of it. That is a special player dr dragging. A poorly run franchise. Dallas should not be three and two today. They could have easily lost to the Giants. And by the way, Giants, not a bad football team. A lot of that's their coaching. They built a solid O line. I mean, it's the organizational structure in Dallas is a train wreck. <laughs> the organizational structure of Pittsburgh is about as good as you could possibly ask for, but they don't have that guy at quarterback, and Dallas does. And that was the difference.
Pittsburgh's defense, uh, Dallas, their first four red zone trips, scored three points. Now, some of that was Dak's doing. Some of that was Dak's doing. But some of it was block kick, pressure by TJ Watt. The Steelers were great where we tend to see them be great. The number one defense in the league, and it didn't matter against that guy because that's what the great ones do. Dak Prescott, <sighs> the one game I root against this man, and he kills me in the end. Of course he does. But you know what? For this brief moment, Dak, put the Dak hat on for just a moment here. Pretty good job. I wish I could celebrate it. I'll be rooting for you next week, buddy. I, I will. But last night was painful. But what a... Given the circ the circumstances matter, context matters. Given the circumstances, beat up defense, beat up offensive line, dealing with injuries, getting penalized. McCarthy's calling an average game. Uh, Pittsburgh is doing their thing defensively. A weather delay, an hour and a half weather delay. The game ends at one in the morning. Quarterback like that, that's what he does. Give him an opportunity and he will make you pay. When he got the ball in his hands late, I'm like, gosh darn it, we're going to lose this game. If we don't make one play, one big time, Landon Roberts did his best. Kudos to him. If we don't make one play, he's going to get us. I mean, even by the way, last thing, I'll, and I'll get to the comments. Mid drive, when Dak hits, I think it was Lipke. Uh, yeah, Lipke on the uh, on, on the long run uh, there for Dallas. Dak Prescott, <laughs> it's a bad dude right here. Dak turns. I wish we had the picture on here. Dak turns to his right. Looks dead. TJ Watt, dead. The best pass rush of the game, dead in the eye, and just laughs at him. I mean, that, that's that's the moxie. That's the cool, calm, and collected Dak Prescott that we've grown accustomed to. That's why I've lo loved the guy since he was in college at Mississippi State, and it's why the Cowboys are lucky to have him. They they really, really are. Like, all you, some of you, Cow and there's, there's a lot of Cowboys fans that love Dak. Like, no question. But some of you Cowboys fans act like, oh, he's the source taller pro. <laughs> Y'all got blown out if not for that guy last night. He's fantastic. He, I mean, he he is as as great as great as they come. Short of guys like Mahomes and and, and Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow. Aside from those big four, who to me are the best of the best in the league, he's as good as they come. Un, I mean, I thought that was unbelievable by Dak Prescott. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live, as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.